All right, church, sing it with me now. Only a boy named Elhanan, only a little sling. Only a boy named Elhanan, but he could pray and sing. Only a boy named Elhanan, only a babbling brook. Only a boy named Elhanan, and five little stones he took. Stick around. We'll talk about it. We're here to study the Bible. We're here to study the Bible. We're here. We're here to study the Bible. Might get us in trouble. Cause we're being intentionally provocative with our intros. All right, quick review. In 1 Samuel, we have two very different stories about the how and the when King Saul meets David. Now, we don't talk about it a lot, but it's apparent. Even a casual reader of the Bible could see the discrepancies between these two chapters. In 1 Samuel 16, David is a skilled musician. He's also described as a valiant fellow, a warrior. And he's enlisted to drive away the evil spirits that plague King Saul by skillfully playing the lyre. Saul is so impressed with David, in fact, that he also enlists him to be his armor bearer. In 1 Samuel 17, in the very next chapter, David is an unknown shepherd boy. He's a runt. He's a kid. He's not a warrior. He's precocious and brave. And he has no interest whatsoever in fighting Goliath according to the rules of warfare. The giant is outfitted for hand-to-hand -hand combat, but David just snipes him at a distance with his slingshot. At the end of the battle, and this is where it's really weird, Saul has no idea who David is. It's like they've never met before. Joel Baden concludes that both of these stories cannot be historically true, for they contradict each other at almost every turn. Now, there's one more piece of information that I haven't told you yet about the story of David and Goliath. And honestly, this one's going to be weird. It's probably going to hurt a little bit. And at some point in this video, you might want to just find a Bible at, just so you can throw it against the wall. But I would encourage you not to do that for a number of reasons. I would encourage you not to do that. But let's just breathe and say this together. It will be okay. It will be okay. 1 Samuel 17 is not the only place where we read about a giant named Goliath whose spear was like a weaver's beam. In 2 Samuel 21, we read of another battle with the Philistines. In verse 19 of the New International Version, it says, In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elhanan, son of Jer, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. So in this text, Elhanan kills the brother of Goliath, which, you know, that, that makes sense. Maybe he's still a little peeved about the whole slingshot to the face and head chopping off of his brother, so he wants to go to war with Israel. That, that, that makes sense, except and this is where you might want to find a Bible to throw it, uh, that's not actually what the Hebrew says. In the Hebrew, there is no description, the brother of, which makes this passage a real problem. Check out another English translation. This is a New Revised Standard Version, and it says, Then there was another battle with the Philistines at Gob, and Elhanan, son of Jer, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. But I thought David killed Goliath, and now the NRSV is saying that Elhanan is killing Goliath. Now, some have suggested that maybe there's two giants named Goliath, both from Gath and both with a really big spear, but that doesn't... That, that seems improbable. Uh, others have said, well, maybe, maybe David's name is, is Elhanan, and maybe it's the same person. But again, that doesn't seem very likely either. 
To be fair, some ancient interpreters were also troubled with this detail. Uh, the Book of Chronicles, for example. It's, it's a later retelling of many of the same stories that are found in the books of Samuel and Kings. And because it's later, it often has a different take on some of these stories. For example, the Book of Chronicles wants David to look really clean and shiny. And in order to do that, you kind of have to get pretty creative with some of the stories about him. In fact, if you were the chronicler and you were attempting to make David nice and clean and shiny, what's one potential problem area in the story of David? I'll give you a hint. It's the one where David is a peeping Tom and he commits adultery and murders the husband of the woman that he has slept with and impregnated. Yeah, it's the story of David uh, sort of sexually assaulting Bathsheba. Uh, so what does the chronicler do with this story? Well, he deletes it, he does not include it. It's, it's gone. It's not a part of this idealized David that he wants to project. So the chronicler is no stranger to fixing problems. In their retelling of the story of Elhanan, who again in 2 Samuel kills the same person that David already has, uh, the book attempts to make sense of this by saying, in another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, the son of Jer, killed Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. Now we've heard this before. Uh, Elhanan kills Goliath's brother. And now he even has a name. His name is Lami. But here's, here's the problem with that. In 2 Samuel, Elhanan is called the son of Jer, the Bethlehemite. In Chronicles, he's the son of Jer, but the bit about Bethlehem is not included. And here's the kicker. The name Lami is actually just the last half of the word for Bethlehemite in Hebrew. This would be Beit HaLachmi. So most scholars think that the author of Chronicles is inventing a name for Goliath's brother to help resolve the problem. And I know, I know, this is a lot. And I imagine that you didn't even know that this problem existed. I, in fact, imagine most pastors don't know that this problem exists either. But now that we're here and we have all of these different pieces, uh, let's figure out how to deal with it. And I can at least tell you what I've done. We have two contradictory stories that identify the killer of Goliath. In 1 Samuel 17, it's David. And in 2 Samuel 21, it's Elhanan. In 1 Samuel 17, we have this huge narrative about David. It's the entire chapter. And David is this unknown little shepherd boy and he's slaying the giant. This is one of the first introductions that we as readers have to the person of David. Not the really first, but it's one of the first. In 2 Samuel 21, we have one line about a guy that you've probably never heard of named Elhanan killing a giant named Goliath. And it would be pretty weird to take a well-known story about David, who's the king of Israel or becomes the king of Israel to take a well-known story about him, a well-known guy, and reduce it to one verse in a list of crazy military exploits in the latter chapters of 2 Samuel. Do you follow that logic? It, it doesn't make sense to take this well-known story and reduce it to one throwaway line about Elhanan. But maybe, maybe it, it could work the opposite way. Maybe the author would take a throwaway line about Elhanan and craft a larger narrative about King David to provide an image of his character. One scholar, Baruch Halpern, says, most likely storytellers displaced the deed from the otherwise obscure Elhanan onto the more famous character, David. And I have no idea if David actually killed someone in the way described in 1 Samuel 17. Uh, one scholar thinks that he did. Stephen McKenzie says, David did not kill Goliath, but the oldest version of the story, by which he means the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, the Septuagint, 
the oldest version of the story, doesn't preserve the name of the giant Philistine that David did kill. And I don't know, maybe. Here's what I do know. That feeling that you have right now, that feeling of rage or shock or whatever it is when we feel like we've been lied to for our entire lives, that's not about the Bible. It's about the idea that you have about the Bible. That desire that you have right now to make all of these pieces fit, to make everything make sense. That's probably there to protect the idea that you have about the Bible, all of the adjectives that we have put on it. You want that to remain what it is, and this is threatening that. What we find here is not a 21st century Western piece of objective history. The Bible and these stories, they're always theological. Sometimes it's historical fiction, sometimes it's fictional history, but the Bible is not oftentimes what we think it is. But if David didn't kill Goliath, it's okay because there's something else going on in the story. The authors of the NIV, remember, uh, in, in this case, they have taken the ability away from you, the reader, to decide what's happening. They, they say that Elhanan kills the brother of Goliath, and they know that that's not what the Hebrew says. But they also know that we've created a context where we can't handle contradictions because we've come to believe that the Bible doesn't contradict itself. But I think that, that we're better than that. I think we as readers can, can do more with the words on the page than have it spoon-fed to us by people making decisions for us. In fact, I think that the Spirit can empower us to think deeply about the Bible, to ask big questions uh, about God and, and faith, and to know that God can handle them. The Spirit can empower us to have the strength to say, hmm, this is a new reading and I don't know what to do with it, but I'm going to sit with it for a little bit of time, maybe pray it through, maybe read some stuff and figure out what other folks are saying about these things. Also, I believe that the Spirit of the risen Christ will hold us and whisper to us in the midst of this that the conversation that we're having right now about David and Elhanan and Goliath, that it's, it's not about Jesus. And that's who we're supposed to be trusting in the first place. So I would say, let's keep trusting and let's keep reading intelligently and openly and honestly. I'm convinced that when we do, God walks with us that God honors our efforts, and that God may be moving us to a new understanding of who God is and what the Bible is all about.